Hi there, Matt here with the virtualinstructor.com, and in this lesson, we're gonna be drawing a sphere. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Aren't there more interesting things out there to draw other than a sphere? Of course there are, but we draw a sphere as a practical drawing exercise, and this exercise is important for a couple of reasons. One, spheres typically have a full range of value associated with them. This means they have the darkest darks and the lightest lights and all the middle values in between. So we can practice seeing those in our reference and putting those in our drawing. Very important. Now, the second practical reason why we draw a sphere is that those locations of value are, are easily recognized. And these locations are very important in creating the illusion of light in a drawing and the illusion of form. So we can practice locating those locations of value and we can also practice creating that full range of value by drawing a sphere. And when we nail that down and we do a good job with this, then we can move on to all of those exciting things out there to draw in the world besides a sphere. But for now, let's draw a sphere. So grab that pencil and let's get ready to draw a sphere. I bet you'll find that this exercise is a little bit more interesting and more challenging than you might expect. A sphere has a full range of value. We can see here clearly, we've got the darkest darks and we've got the lightest lights. It may be hard to see here in the video, but there is an area of highlight that is pretty much white. In fact, we're gonna to try to make it white in our drawing. It's not completely white, but it's white enough to leave white. And then we have that full gradation of value progressively getting darker as we go over to this area. Now, another reason why spheres are so good to explain value and the importance of value is because um, there are very defined areas on the sphere where light is hitting it, which is leading to the illusion of form. We have an area up here, which is the highlight. Then we have this middle area right here, which is called the midtone. And then we have this darker area that exists on the object, which is called core shadow. And then we have this area behind it, which is called cast shadow. And light actually comes down in this case and bounces off of the surface of the table and bounces back up here. And you can see how this area area right here is lighter in value and that's creating a reflected highlight. So we've got all of these things going on on a sphere and it's very easy to explain what those things are when we're working with a curved object like this. So we're going to start by drawing a circle. I'm going to start by kind of locking my wrist and holding the pencil a couple of inches away from the paper and then I'm going to rotate my shoulder. It may look like I'm rotating my wrist but I'm not. If I pull it up like this my wrist is nice and tight and my palm is just rolling over the surface of the paper. And I'm gonna start making several circles, and then I'm gonna slowly bring my pencil down to the surface. Now, of course, this is not a, it's not a perfect science, and you're not gonna get a perfect circle every time, but you can get a pretty good circle. Um, and I drew several lines here, and you know, the reason why I like to draw several lines is you have a better chance of getting the correct line when you draw several of them. And then you can kind of erase and remove extra lines. Now I'm going to go ahead and give an indication of the cast shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and draw an ellipse. And I'll draw several lines for that as well. Obviously our light source is originating from the upper left hand corner up here. All right, so we want to be sure that we're creating the illusion of light, and value is what's going to create that illusion. It's not only going to create the illusion of light, but it's also going to create the illusion that it's a round, spherical ball sitting on the surface. Um, so since we're working on white paper, we're going to be adding the darker value, so it only makes sense to start in the areas that are the darkest. Now we're starting with values that are a little bit lighter than what they actually are in our reference here. We're going to progressively get darker with these applications, of course. It's always better to start light and go dark rather than to go too dark too quickly. I'm kind of changing directions here with my strokes here and there just to try to make it as smooth and even of an application as possible. We've got to learn to recognize those very subtle changes in value where it gets very, very light in areas, but it's still not white. All right, now let's start pushing some of these values darker. Now that we've got some of our initial applications on here, we can get a little bit darker. 
Now to make these darker values, we'll switch over to the 2B pencil, which is a little bit softer. And for that reason, it's gonna be a little bit darker than the HB pencil. You just lift, lift some of the value off without really affecting the texture. I'm gonna switch over to the 4B pencil now, and we're gonna go ahead and make the area of core shadow pretty dark. All right, now in the area of cast shadow, a lot of times that's the darkest area, and sometimes it is sometimes it is the uh, second darkest. Sometimes the area of core shadow is actually the darkest, but in this case, we know that this area is the darkest. So just to save time, I'm gonna go ahead and continue with the 4B pencil. Now you might notice here that we're not using any blending tools at all. We're just relying on the pressure that we place on the pencil to create the gradations of value. All right, now using the kneaded eraser, I'm just going to kind of clean up that edge a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, now I'm going to put a little bit of value behind here just so we can see the contrast. You can see that the object is sitting on a table here. So I'm just going to go ahead and give an indication of that as well. And then we can put a little bit of indication of the value behind it. Um, so that these highlighted areas stand out a little bit more. The way we perceive value, after all, is all determined by the relationships of the value around it. So by adding this darker value in the background, we better understand the highlights and midtones. So now we have our locations of value in place. We have the area of cast shadow underneath the sphere. We have the area of core shadow where it's the darkest value on the object. And then we have the reflected highlight where light is bouncing off of the surface of the table back onto the underside of the sphere. And then we have the area of midtone or middle value around the center portion of the sphere. And then of course we have the area where the light is hitting the strongest, which of course is the highlight. And now our drawing of a sphere is complete. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you were able to pick up a thing or two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And if you want to check out all the resources associated with this lesson, like the photo reference that I worked from, just click on the link right up here and it will take you to that page. Thanks again for watching. If you're ready to learn more about drawing and painting, then why not check out our comprehensive membership program? There you'll find comprehensive video courses, weekly live lessons, eBooks, and much, much more. Just click on the button on the center of your screen to learn more or click on the card in the upper right hand corner.